What's up guys, it's Carter here. Today's lab can be broken up into two parts, both of them all about density. For part one, we're going to find the density of a solid, which means we need to find both the mass and the volume of that solid. Not much of an intro, but hey, let's get started. Our first step is to find the mass of a solid. To start off, grab any solid from the cart in the center of the lab and head over to the top loading balance. Once you get to the balance, press the on button, wait for the scale to read zero, and then place your mass on the scale. Make sure you write down the value displayed. Pretty easy, huh? That's step one. Step two, find the volume. To find the volume, we're gonna use a graduated cylinder. Grab one of the larger cylinders from the cart and head over to the bench. We'll also need to use a beaker, which you can find in one of the drawers. Fill your beaker up with tap water, and then pour the water from the beaker into the cylinder, filling the cylinder about halfway. But before we go any further, let's figure out our game plan and take a look at what we're doing. The water we just added is our initial volume. When we later add our solid to this cylinder, the water level is gonna go up, giving us our new final volume. The difference between the final and initial volumes, that is the displacement, is the volume of our solid. One more thing, you need to know what a meniscus is. If you look at the column of water in the cylinder, you will notice that the top part is curved slightly. This curve is called the meniscus. When you do your measurements, make sure to measure from the bottom of the meniscus. So for this example, 30.0 milliliters is our initial volume. Next, we need to add our solid to the cylinder. For this part, be careful. A ton of students have broken their cylinders by just dumping the solid in there. Instead, tilt the cylinder to the side and carefully let the solid slide down. Dealing with broken glassware is not fun. Now that our solid's in there, we can record our final volume. And remember, from the bottom of the meniscus. Now we're going to transition to part two of the lab, where we will find the density of liquid ethanol. Our first step is to tear the top loading balance. Grab one of the smaller graduated cylinders from the cart and head over to the balance. We're gonna actually take a measurement of the empty cylinder first. So when we later add the liquid ethanol, the scale will only display the mass of the liquid by itself without the cylinder and everything. This is called tearing. Tearing lets us measure one specific thing like the liquid ethanol without worrying about how much the cylinder itself weighs. To tear, turn on the scale, place the empty cylinder on it, and then press the tear button. The scale should now read zero because the mass of the empty cylinder has been subtracted. Leave one partner at the scale to make sure no one else zeroes out your tearing while the other person heads over to the hood to get the liquid ethanol from your teacher. You should have been assigned a specific volume of liquid ethanol to collect. Once your teacher gives you your sample, head back over to your teared scale and place the cylinder with the sample on the scale. The number displayed is the mass of the liquid sample only. By tearing, the scale already subtracted the mass of the empty cylinder. Our next step is to double check the volume your teacher gave you. It's okay if it's not exactly what you were supposed to get. Write down the volume to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. In this case, our teacher gave us exactly 4.0 milliliters. That's it for this lab. Listen to your teacher on how to clean up. Good luck, guys.